Welcome to Healthcare Entrepreneur Academy, where we seek to educate, motivate, and inspire professionals into starting their own healthcare businesses. Now, please welcome your host, entrepreneur, healthcare practitioner, Jason Duprat. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the show. Today, I have Laura Gasparis von Frolio. She is a registered nurse and a PhD. She is actually the past president of the National Nurses in Business Association. In fact, she actually owned the entire association for a period of time. She's been featured on the Wall Street Journal. She has been guest on both Good Morning America and Nightline with Ted Koppel, and she was even debuted on on the cover of Business Opportunities Magazine. Laura actually started her own publishing company. She started a journal called Revolution, the Journal of Nurse Empowerment, which won the prestigious Folio Award in 1994. She has published over 30 articles and authored a whopping 11 books. For 30 years, she's been the CEO of her company called Education Enterprises, where she offers educational products and vacation conferences for nurses. I've actually taken some of her training programs I had purchased while I was working in the ICU, her CCRN training program, and it was absolutely phenomenal. And she's one of the main reasons that I had the seed planted in my mind that a nurse could potentially be a healthcare entrepreneur. In addition to those amazing accomplishments, Dr. Gasparis von Frolio has actually created both of those CCRN and CEN review apps on a review app that's available on iPhone and Android. She's even the president of a company called Teacher Alert Systems. She founded that company, which created a patented invention to help assist teachers in the event of school emergencies. The list of accomplishments that she has is absolutely astounding, and we're just barely touching the service, and I'm super excited to introduce Dr. Laura Gasparis von Frolio. Great to be here. <laughs> yeah. So I love starting the show off with sort of background information on, on the guests. So just kind of start, you know, how you got into your first uh, nursing job and how you sort of transitioned um, into your first entrepreneurial gig. Sort of how did that play out and what was going on in your mind as you were thinking about making that transition? Okay. Um, I was always working as a nurse while having a business. It was only, um, I would think, uh, like 15 years ago, I then went part-time, but I had always been working full-time. So, for example, um, the first business I started was CPR Associates. Um, I was living with a roommate, and I said, you know, I'm getting tired of working two jobs, and so was she. And I said, you know, let's uh, cut down and, you know, start a business and make some money. Mm -hmm. She said, what are we going to do? I said, I don't know. What do we have in common? I was working in ICU. She was working in L&D. And so I said, the only thing we have in common is CPR. So let's sell CPR. So we started a company called CPR Associates. Uh, we were certified CPR, but we wasn't certified as an instructor. But anyway, so we sent out two letters, one to E.F. Hutton and one to Merrill Lynch. And we went on to say, um, you know, dear employer, we are two registered nurses certifying CPR. CPR is a life-saving skill. It'll save dead people in 60% of the time, bring them back to life. I think I made up that number. But, um, <laughs> it, you know, everyone needs to know CPR. The life that may be saved may be your very own. You know, get your employee certified. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. So one letter went out to E.F. Hutton. One went out to Merrill Lynch. So then I forgot I did that. Three weeks later, we worked a night shift. So we got home nine o'clock in the morning and the phone rang. I figured I, I, I left with the narcotic keys because back then we used to have narcotic keys to open up the narcotic cabinet, you know? Mm -hmm. So I answered the phone and I'm like, hello. Uh, hi, this is Merrill. I'm like, Merrill who? So then I looked at my roommate and I'm like, do you know Merrill? She said, no. So then I said, Merrill who? She said, Merrill Lynch. I said, Merrill Lynch, you know, name sounds familiar, can't place a face. So I said to my roommate, Lisa, I'm like, you know Merrill Lynch? She said, you sent them that letter, you jerk. I'm like, oh yeah, I did. So then I get back on the phone. I'm like, hello. She says, this is CPR Associates. I'm like, that's who we are. Cause I forgot what we called ourselves. <laughs> that's who we are, CPR Associates. She said, we have 540 people we want certified CPR. I wasn't, I wasn't even an instructor. I didn't even have a mannequin. So I said, listen, it's a very busy time of the year for us. I'll have to get back to you. So I no sooner hang up the phone and the phone rings again. Bring, bring, bring. Hello, CPR Associates. Hi, Joe Stern, EF Hutton. We got 560 people we want certified CPR. 
I'm like, well, Joe, it's a very busy time of the year for us. I'll see if I can squeeze you in. Okay. So then um, what did I do then? Oh, so then I went to the bank. I took out a loan for $10,000. I bought 10 mannequins because back then they were like $1,000 each. Now they're only like $59.95. But anyway, so I took out a loan for $10,000. I put an end to paper. I had CPR instructors. Then uh, me and Lisa had to go be a CPR instructor. Uh, and then I called up uh, a work and told them that I was going to be sick on Monday. Because I told E.F. Hutton and Merrill Lynch, I would train them every Monday. It was a three and a half hour heart saver course. In the morning, we do E.F. Hutton. Then we go across the street. We do uh, Merrill Lynch. Okay. When I went to call in sick, they told me I couldn't be sick because I had off for the weekend. And if I'm going to be sick, you need a doctor's note. I'm like, if I have to get a doctor's note, I'll be gone the whole week. All right. Goodbye. So then I called up Bia Fountain and Merrill Lynch. I said, I have an opening. I could you know, train you the whole week. Okay. So that's what we did. We trained Ian Futton in the morning, went across the street, uh, trained Merrill Lynch. Uh, then Wednesday in the middle of training, uh, Merrill Lynch, one of the people there say, you know, what are you charging for this? So I forgot to think about money because, you know, I was a nurse. So I'm like charging. Okay. We're charging $20 a person. She's like $20 a person. I'm like 15. We're charging $15 a person. She said, okay. But the people last year charged us $65 a head. I'm like, well, we're having a special. So I'll give it to you for $15 a head. Just sign a contract and we'll come back next year. Okay. So then <clears throat> we got our two checks. And then I, I remember I went to the bank Saturday morning to cash them. And the bank teller said to me, uh, who's CPR associates? I'm like, we are. She said, um, we have to open up an account. So I'm like, so open up an account. She said, where's your business papers? I'm like, business papers, what's that? So then I learned you have to get business papers. So then that's how we started. And we wound up training all large companies in New York. We trained small companies. We trained uh, doctor's office, dentist's office, mother's PTAs, parents without partners. You know, we, we just went crazy. I wound up having 25 instructors. And I had that company for about nine years. And then oh, wow. I got tired. I got tired of it. <laughs> <laughs> that's a super so cool that's story. How it all, that's how yeah. it all started. Uh huh. Awesome. Yeah, that's so interesting. And the fact that you had such a high demand for your services as soon as you put it out there is just awesome. Right. Um, what what uh, what were some of the challenges that you faced as far as getting started? Obviously, you just you just took action, which is awesome. Um, and that's yes. one of the best things you can do is just get out there and take action because you can right. you can think and plan for forever. You never take right. action. Nothing's going to happen. I love how you just got in there and you got your hands dirty. Just do it. Yeah. And I do it every time because during uh, well, about two years before I decided not to do that anymore. I matter of fact, I sold the company to somebody else that was doing CPR training. Um, I was working as a staff nurse and I was also teaching at the college uh, and it was a, a Thursday night and one of the professors got a phone call that <clears throat> she was gonna her daughter was getting married the next day on Friday in her backyard 250 people and she got a phone call from the caterer saying well from the caterer's family saying that the caterer dropped dead and because of that they can't cater the wedding so we were on the phone all night trying to find a caterer. We couldn't. She was beside herself. I'm like, listen, Alice, don't worry about it. I got it under control. So I called up all my friends and I said, meet me at Pathmark 11 o'clock. We met at Pathmark. We went shopping, came back to my house. We cooked all night. In the morning, we called up. We got uh, silverware, tableware, tables, chairs, tents, a bar. Uh, we went to uh, Macy's. We got black pants. We bought aprons. We pulled it off. We catered 250 people. Wow. Anyway, it, it wound up being such a success. Everyone was like, oh, my God, what's the name of your caterer? Oh, my God, we love it. The food's so good. I started a catering company. It was called Ooh La La Caterers. And uh, so so I never really plan anything. I just do it. Yeah. That's, <laughs> That's my crazy. motto. That is, that is when, not, uh -huh. when you plan things, you procrastinate, and it never gets done. Yeah, yeah, great piece of advice right there. And and catering for 250 people is no small feat. I used to be in the restaurant business and we did some catering uh -huh. too. And th there's a lot of moving parts to that to get everything everything cooked on time, make sure nothing's cold. Wow, that's exactly. pretty awesome. <laughs> I know, so we all had a... Mm -hmm. Did you keep running yeah. that catering business or did you? I, 
I did. I wound up having that for nine years. Oh. And then uh, I got tired of that. And then I, I gave all my accounts to someone on Staten Island that has a catering business. Okay. And so that was your second business? What, and that was my had, second business. Yeah, you've had so many. Um, I did. Oh, I had a lot. Was, yeah. How was the, the transition into the next one? Uh, the next one was uh, A.D. Vaughn Publishers. Um, and that was in 1989, I started a magazine for nurses. And the reason why I did that is I was also teaching at the college and you had to get published in order to get tenure. And everything I sent into nursing journals would always be returned and they would change everything around and they'd say, oh, that would irritate our advertisers or that would make hospitals not happy and all this nonsense. So I'm like, you know, what is this? Communism? You're telling me what to write? So I decided to start my own journal, and I did. It was called um, Revolution, the Journal of Nurse Empowerment. We had about 50,000 uh, subscribers, so we were doing pretty well. Matter of fact, when the first issue came out, I wound up <clears throat> getting about $275,000 in advertising dollars uh, from 3M and pharmaceutical companies and hospital recruiters. And so we did very well in terms of advertising. When the first issue came out, uh, you know, we had articles on nurse empowerment and uh, unionization in order to give you a voice at work. Um, and what happened is our advertisers called us up and said that they received phone calls from the hospitals and that the hospital said that they were not going to buy their products if they continued to advertise in our journal called Revolution because we mentioned the word unions. So the advertisers called us up and said, because of that, we need to see your editorial content before we uh, you know, give you advertising dollars. Mm -hmm. So I said, I don't think so. So I refunded $275,000 in advertising dollars wow. and I decided to be advertising free, just subscription based because no one was going to dictate my editorial content. Awesome. So that was the, the next business I had and I had that for about nine years. Uh -huh. And then I wound up selling that to uh, the California Nurses Association uh, right when they broke away from the ANA. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's a pretty cool story, and, and I applaud you for sticking to your guns um, and mm -hmm. not being able to be, not allowing yourself to be censored. And you know, you gave up a lot of money to do that, but I'm sure it was worth it. Um, it that's why you're one of the, the most um, prominent <laughs> leaders in the nursing space. So we look up, look forward, or look up to you for that. Um, here's a copy of that mm. um, journal. This actually won the the Frolio Award, right? It did. It awesome. did. Um, and I think in 1994 we won the. Folio Award, which is equivalent to like an Oscar or an Emmy or a Tony. Yeah. Which was shocking because we came up against GQ Magazine, Life, Time. I uh -huh. mean, big time magazines we came up against and yeah. we won the we won the gold award. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Congratulations on that. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. I want to just encourage everybody. We've got quite a few um, viewers watching the live. This is the uh, one of the most we've ever had. The I think you almost broke Facebook when I when I announced that you were going to be on the show. Uh -huh. <laughs> we have so many fans uh, from around the globe. Um, so there's some on here on the live, and so if anybody wants to ask questions, feel free to do it, and uh, I'll I'll throw those out there once they come up. Mm -hmm. Cool. So how was um? So you, you sold that to um, California Nurses Association, okay. and then, then you started another venture. I did. I started a publishing company for books okay. called Power Publication. And um, I did this because I had written a book called Nurse Abuse, Impact and Resolution. And it was a, a book that went into all the ways that nurses were abused, whether it be financially, physically, emotionally, uh, ethically. And uh, I wanted someone to publish it and everyone I sent it to all the nursing publishers said it was too controversial um and so i'm like well all right the heck with you i'll start my own publishing company so i did and uh we published quite a few i would say close to 60 70 books uh that nurses wrote who were unable to get it published via the mainstream nursing publishers mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Awesome. What would you say to somebody who, you know, there's two different schools of thought on sort of starting multiple different ventures. What would you mm -hmm. say to somebody who said, who, who would give the advice to just stay in your lane, do one thing, focus on one thing. Obviously you've proved that not to be the case. You've just, just right. everything that you touch um, right. does amazing. So what would be your advice there? Uh, just do it. I mean, uh -huh. people say, when I started my magazine, there was a very uh, well-known, um, editor of a nursing administration magazine and uh, when i had uh, we did a seminar together and she said you know what are you up to now so i told her i said oh, i'm gonna start a magazine for nurses she said what experience do you have we said none i said i'll learn as i go along and she laughed she almost fell off a chair she said oh boy don't we have big dreams so of mm -hmm. course when i won the folio award i had the award bronzed a cast of it made and I sent it to her. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love that. <laughs> Did you so, ever hear back from her? <laughs> what? No, never. Okay. Uh, but the thing is, is um, you know, even if you're on the right track, if you don't move, you're going to get run over. And mm -hmm. you get, just got to keep on moving. And the key to life is to do different things. Try different things. Sometimes you might fall on your face, but it's not the end of the world. You still have your health. You're still alive. Just go for it. And you don't have to know everything about what it is you're going to do. You'll learn along the way. Yeah, actually, I totally agree with that. <laughs> you know, action trumps um, excessive planning every day of the week. Yes. You'll figure it out. And, yeah. and sometimes there are bumps in the road, right? Not every single business that everybody touches is going to turn to gold. Right. Um, so failures are part of the plan. What, uh -huh. what was one of your failures along the way? Um, it's part of the process, rather. Uh, what was uh -huh. one of your failures along the way, and how did you overcome that? What was your thought process? I, I really never had a failure. I mean, I, maybe I don't view it as a failure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, for example, when I started Education Enterprises, and that's been in business for over 30 years. That's a seminar company. We do seminars for nurses. Uh, we put out DVDs and CDs and give CEUs, and we have vacations for nurses. Okay. Uh, when I first started that business, I um, booked a hotel in New York and I was going to do, um, I think, a 1280 kg. Okay. So I made up my brochures and I noticed that every other brochure I always received in the mail, mail had bulk rate permit. So I figured I need to have that too. So I put on my brochure, bulk rate permit. I figured once I put it in the mailbox, I'll, I'll get a bill. That's what I figured. Uh, but that wasn't the case. So I get all these brochures printed. I put the word bulk rate permit. I mail them out. And of course, they all come back. They all come back because in order to have a bulk rate permit, you have to go to the post office and pay a hundred bucks or $150. And then you're supposed to put your bulk rate permit number. I didn't know that. So what happened is no one showed up at the seminar because by the time I got the brochures back, you know, the party was over. So, mm -hmm. you know, I learned. Uh, was it the end of the world? No, it was worth, I learned. Yeah, and, exactly. Which is so important. And learning is painful. Yeah. So I had a little pain and, and then you move on. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that some people might think it's a failure. I, I see it as a learning opportunity. Yeah, exactly. And it, it, paradigm shift. Um, mm -hmm. You know, if you're always looking at things from a negative perspective, you know, you're never going to get anywhere either, right? So you change uh -huh. your paradigm, you know, a, a failure or, or a, uh, a trouble or a, a, a something that's blocking you is not mm -hmm. necessarily, you know, a problem. It's it, you look right. at it as an opportunity, opportunity to learn, opportunity to grow. Right, yeah. right. We had a, a little issue uh, last year. Um, <clears throat> there was a company who took my CCRN review book mm -hmm. and decided to make it into an app. Okay. And... Um, you know, as the months were going on, our numbers were going down in terms of who was buying the book. And we were even getting phone calls. People say, I want my money back on the book because I just bought an app that's the same as your book. So after investigating, we found the app and we compared it to our book and it was the same. Um, so that was a little bit of a, a bump in the road in that our sales really went down in terms of book sales while their app, uh, they had over... 40,000 downloads at, uh, I think it was 29.95. So they pulled in 1.4 million and um, 
and our numbers went down, you know, but, you know, we, we went to court and so now I have an app <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I undercut their price and, uh, but you move on, you know, it's not the end of the world. You still have your health, you learn. Yeah. So, so how did that play out? Did they, did they essentially just steal the information out of your book or did you have an arrangement with them to sort of build the app or how did, or the no, well, they, you know, they had called me uh, about two years ago, mm -hmm. wanting to use my questions. And I said, okay, but you know, it brings an income into my company and that income pays salaries. So, you know, you do have to give me something for using the questions. And they wanted to give, I think it was like, I want to say $7 a month. It was like, don't even waste the postage stamp. Yeah. I said, I, I can't do it. So I said, no. So they didn't like that answer. So they just decided to take the book wow. and put it into an app. Yes. Yeah. So that, you know, that was a little bump in the road last year and that our numbers went down, but, and it was a pain in the neck dealing with attorneys and all sorts other nonsense, but it was a learning experience. Yeah, for sure. And there's <laughs> always people that are going to try and rip you off if you're, if you're one of the leaders in the field. So it happens all the time. What are you going to do? Is there do? any way to help protect yourself against that? I know you, like it, you don't always have to have a copyright because <laughs> if you're the original writer, the copyright's sort of implied. Do you, do you have copyrights on any of your stuff? Have you had to look into that? Well, you know, I always see it's always a learning. You always uh -huh. learn. With every bump you learn. I always thought that when I put a C in a circle and copyrighted my name and the date that it's copyrighted. In a court of law, nothing is copyrighted unless you contact the copyright office, submit what it is you're copywriting, get their approval, pay the money. Mm -hmm. And only then is it copyrighted. So in a court of law, just putting a little C, mm -hmm. you must go through the United States Copyright Office in order for it to be copyrighted so that you could bring your case to court. Mm -hmm. Good to know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So you don't have a leg to stand on if you, if you did it and you didn't go to the United States Copyright Office. You don't have mm -hmm. a leg to stand on in yep. court. So now you have the app and you, you process your own questions in there. Did you have to hire a developer to continue updating it? Um, we did. Yeah, we hired a developer. Yep. Yeah, I have to do all that because I'm not social uh, media. Uh, I'm not good at that. Mm -hmm. I was born before TVs were invented. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's how old I am. I'm almost 70. So, uh, you know, social, me me so social media is not my thing. So yes, we hired somebody to do the app. And matter of fact, uh, we hired somebody to do our social media and, Okay. When it comes to hiring people, do you have any advice for somebody who's, you know, looking into hiring something that they're not good at? Because that's usually where you start to fill your gaps um, initially as you sort of, uh, your weaknesses, you sort of hire those out. Um, right, right. What kind of advice do you have when it comes to hiring? Well, hiring, you always want to hire someone smarter than you. Okay. And you always want to get references. You always want to a bunch of references. You need to talk to people because a lot of crazy people out there, you know? So uh, you want to get a lot of references and um, you want your staff to have the input on who they want to work with. Um, I have all females in my office, so they have good intuition. So mm -hmm. um, it always works. Okay, cool. Thanks for that. <laughs> so what was your next, uh, what was your next venture of the many? <laughs> Uh, I guess my last venture, which is now uh, in the workings, is a company uh, called Teacher Alert System. Mm -hmm. I invented and patented uh, a product called the Teacher Alert System. I have it right here, as a matter of fact. This is oh. a fob. All right. And this fob can be clipped onto your belt or wear it around your neck, whatever. And uh, the teacher alert system is a direct connection to the ambulance or the police officers or uh, to teachers. So on this fob, there are buttons. So for example, if I'm in a classroom and I have a, I have a, a child that has a seizure, rather than me sending two third graders to go to the front office or to go to the school nurse, 
All I have to do is just press the ambulance button. It connects me directly in New York anyway to 911. And they'll say, and it has a speaker on it. It'll mm -hmm. say 911, what's your emergency? You say, I have a child that's having a seizure. They'll say, lie the child on the side. Don't put anything in the mouth, you know, pop, pop, pop. If I'm uh, in, let's say high school, um, last, last, no, 2017, there were 444,000 public school teachers that were physically assaulted in schools. That's a half a million teachers who are now on disability that you're paying for, who are mm -hmm. not teaching. I would think if a student knows that you have something around your neck or on your belt, that if you press it, it contacts the police. I think they're going to think twice about hitting you in the head with a book. So you press that button, connects you right to the police department. Should there be an active shooter? Normally what happens with an active shooter, a teacher has to, you know, go out into the hallway and find a phone. <laughs> and then when he or she tries to get back into the classroom, all classroom doors are now locked. So now he or she can't get back into the classroom. Great. But anyway, what, what I have here is a uh, button and mm -hmm. it's the teacher alert button. Uh, you press that button, active shooter, it alerts every teacher, the fire department, the police department, the ambulance, the school nurse, everybody, that there's an active shooter. So now you're ready to hide or you know what to do. Uh, many teachers have on their phone an app called Panic. That's what happened in Parkland. They all had the app Panic. But what, and you press it and notifies, it will go to a call center where mine doesn't go to a call center, it goes directly to the mm -hmm. police department or the ambulance. Okay. Um, but those teachers in bringing their phone into the bathroom where they were hiding, the app didn't work. There was no reception. So that's why it took them, what, 11 minutes for the police even to be notified. Mm -hmm. um, this teacher alert system works on Wi-Fi, cellular, and satellite. So you're yeah. always guaranteed a connection. Yeah, I love it. And then when you're trying to like, you get into your app, your phone to unlock it um, in the middle of a crisis situation, like right. getting your password right, getting your finger. This, of course, that's going to be the time your fingerprint doesn't work. Right. Um, right. So I love that. It's one touch. Sure. Yeah. One touch. One touch. Here you yeah. have it around your neck or uh, on your clip it on your belt and thing. It works right away. Mm -hmm. So um, we had a patent pending. Now we applied for a non-provisional patent, which you, we should hear. Um, by the end of the week, we should hear. Oh, cool. And once I have that patent, I have to make a decision. If I want to manufacture it and start a big new company, or do I just want to sell the patent? Mm -hmm. So that's what we're up to. Cool. I, I would love to hear a little bit more about what your inspiration was for that and then kind of work through the process of creating an actual product. Well, I, I just had a brainstorm in that, uh, you know, a lot of my friends, uh, children or teachers. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of them have children that are special needs in the classroom who may have a seizure or a meltdown or, or something. And they tell me they have to leave the classroom to go out into the hallway to make a phone call. And what really pushed me is my niece is a, is a teacher. She's 23 years old, just became a teacher. And she has a group of special needs children. And one child was on the floor having a meltdown, but they had to be in the auditorium. So now they're late, they're like 10 minutes late. So she called the front office to say, we're, we're late. But no one answered in the front office because they were all at the auditorium. Mm -hmm. And so she didn't know what to do because she can't drag them out. She can't, she didn't know what to do. So I said, we need a teacher alert system. So that's where that brainstorm came. And so I brainstormed what I think it should have. And then I met with engineers, product design engineers and electrical engineers, and they put all the schematics together. And then I went to a prototype developer and. Cool. So that's what you have there is the prototype. I have a pro. Well, it is a working prototype. Yeah, okay. it's a working prototype. Yeah. And there's a base unit that goes with it. You need one of these every thousand feet. Mm -hmm. And it's cheap. This is uh, about $125 to make. And the fob is around $25, $30 to make. So it's cheap. You know, we queried 40,000 teachers 
just to see what they think of it. Mm -hmm. Everybody but one person thought it was the best thing in the world. They said they would buy it themselves. You know, and we're getting a lot of calls. I just got a call from uh, Northern Michigan. There's a uh, someone in charge as a chancellor or whatever, and he has 40 schools and he wants it. And we went to the schools on Staten Island and everyone we talked to about it, everybody said, we'll buy it because it's cheap. Mm -hmm. You know, most yeah. people are spending 150, 200,000 on cameras and all this other nonsense, whereas this will get everybody where they need to be. Uh huh. Yeah, it makes sense. I love it. I like how you you actually listened to the market first. You tested the market to see if they were interested in it before spending um, right. way too much money. So, right. Yeah, that's a great idea. Um, a lot of people have the mentality that if you build it, they will come, and that's not definitely not always the case. Yeah. Well, yeah. I don't. You know, I'm not in a public school, so I don't know. You know, what happened? So that's why we asked forty thousand teachers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, what good. does the process look like when it comes to finding the actual the engineers? Did you use like a, a platform like Upwork or something to hire them or did you hire a firm? No, I contacted a design company, mm -hmm. a product design company, and they're the ones that put me in contact with uh, uh, electrical engineer or product design person. They, they orchestrated the whole thing for a fee and mm -hmm. uh, that's how it came together. And then uh, hiring an attorney to... Um, do the patent pending, although now I learned that I don't need an attorney for that. You just go on USPTO.gov mm -hmm. and you can file your own patent pending for $150. So next time I know. And then uh, for the non-provisional patent, uh, you could do that yourself as well. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, okay. I think it was about 3000 as opposed to like 40000 <laughs> Yeah, oh, but I learned, so now I'm ready to have another brainstorm. Cool. So, so what's your um, your plan to take it to market? Do you have a, a plan in place yet? Are you still working on that? I have a plan. I have people lined up that if I do want to start the business and you know sell the product, I do have someone who will run the company. Um, we do have a marketing place in Shanghai, China that'll, you know, put it, manufacture it. Uh, so we do have all the plan, although I would really want to just sell the patent. Yeah. That's what I really want to do. Yeah. 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 So, or license it. I guess you could license it too and collect a, a royalty. You could, you could, uh -huh. you could. Cool. Did you have to go to China to meet the manufacturers or was that sort of set up through that consulting agency that you. Yeah, I had I paid somebody to go over there and get price quotes and stuff. Yeah, I didn't okay. have to go to Shanghai. <laughs> <laughs> I do enough traveling every week. Right. I'm on the road every week. Last uh -huh. thing I need to do is go to Shanghai. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Cool. So um, I kind of wanted to circle back to the whole consulting um, business, the vacation retreats. Uh, I think that's a really interesting. You've been doing that for a really long time. What was it, 30 plus 30, years? 35, yeah. 36 years. Yeah. Uh -huh. So that, that's time. where your traveling comes from, is going to these uh, retreats? Is that what you're referring to? Well, every week I do CCRN review seminars. Okay. Uh, so I'm on the road uh, every week for two days. I do the first day and then I hired somebody to do the second day. Lee Taylor Vaughn, he's excellent. Um, and then two or three times a year, we have vacations for nurses and uh, we get anywhere from 150 to 200 nurses and we run just a six hour program, three hours on one day, three hours on the other day. And it's not CCRN review. It's um, like uh, I go to Punta Cana the second week in May and the topic there is how to deal with difficult people because, you know, at work there's always difficult people. Amen. <laughs> cool. So when it comes to, I guess, are those CE approved? Maybe um, you yes. can get some advice on getting CE, uh, how to get CE approval, what that process looks like, because I'm sure that's. Okay. Uh, um, it depends on how many courses you're going to offer. If mm -hmm. you're going to offer just one course or two courses, I advise either go to your state nurses association mm -hmm. or you can go to specialty organizations such as AACN 
or a BCEN, you know, for emergency. Mm -hmm. And the fee is you, you've got some papers to fill out and you have to give them a course outline and references. And it runs about 85 to a hundred dollars to get that course approved anywhere from one to three years. And that enables you to give CEUs. Okay. Then you could be a CEU provider, which is what we are. Mm -hmm. This is a, a fairly long process. And to be a CEU provider, a ton of paperwork, and it runs about three, four thousand uh, dollars. But what it does is it, it enables me to give CEUs for any course I teach, as well as uh, people viewing the DVD or the CD, they get CEUs for that. So a provider is, it covers every course you teach. Whereas if you're just starting out and have one course that you want to take on the road, just go through your state nurses association. Yeah. And to get that provider license, is that something you have to go through like a, a national organization, like the American Association of? You uh, have to go through a branch of the American Nurses Association. Uh -huh. Okay. So it's a, the American Nurses Association credentialing committee. Okay. When it comes to sort of uh, planning these events, um, obviously there's, I'm sure there's a lot of upfront costs when it comes to booking a reservation. I know you, you've done some on like cruise ships too and everything, right? Oh, I used to do it all the time on cruise ship. I would get like 800 people. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But then, yeah, I get tired. I get tired. Yeah. I get bored easily. So I don't right. do that anymore. So I don't know. There's, there's not too many people doing it. Mm -hmm. You know, someone should start up a business called Cruise Ed. Especially mm -hmm. if it's a it's a guy and his name is Ed, that'd be great. Huh? <laughs> That's great. You should do it for CRNAs. I know, right? Oh, you make yeah. a mint. Uh huh. <laughs> you make a mint. You know, how, and you it, 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 doing, uh, how would you go about doing like the first uh, event? And because you have to like book out a bunch of rooms in advance, right? Or guarantee a certain number of rooms. I never did. Uh, in mm -hmm. the beginning, I never did that because I didn't okay. know what how many. You know, Ooh. so I just would book like ten rooms, ten okay. cabins. Yeah. And then as the money was coming in, I book another 10 cabins okay. as the money coming in. So I really wasn't using my money. I was using your money. Yeah. Yeah. And then after a while, then, you know, you get a feel and I'll book a hundred cabins up front. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. That's really interesting. It's, it's a pretty fun business model, right? Cause you get to travel everywhere and uh, meet people yeah. and teach and yeah, it's fun. Do it for CRNAs. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. You'll make a mint. Yeah, because there's so many of them now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think there's uh, over fifty-two thousand or something like that. It's crazy. Hello, there yeah. you go, new business. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's easy. Awesome. Uh huh. It's very easy. Cool. So um, I want to like circle back real quick too, also to the um, CCRN review and CEN review. Mm -hmm. um, both phenomenal programs. I actually, I have. Uh, I went through my closet and, and, my, and looked up some of the books. I, I enrolled in both of these back in the day. Oh, um, boy. The, the CD set and everything. Wow. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what, what, do you, uh, what kind of advice do you have when it comes to creating uh, like a, a national certification review or anything like that? Because you've been in that space for a really long time. I've been a long time. And you know what? You know why it works? Um, I might speak to about uh, 3,000, 4,000 nurses a year. And I always ask them after they take my review course and they pass, let me know. Let me know what was on it. You don't mm -hmm. have to give me exact questions. Just let me know the topics. Make sure I'm, I'm hitting the nail on the head. So mm -hmm. it's that feedback that keeps me in business. Mm -hmm. People say, oh, I listened to a, a CD or a DVD and I pass. Why? Because I got information from nurses who took the exam. Yeah. So if you're going to do anything in terms of certification, make sure you have that communication with the people that are taking it. Now, mm -hmm. my partner, Lee, uh, he takes it, you know, I think he takes it once a year. So he's right on the money, you know? Yeah. yeah. So you just got to keep current. Yeah, exactly. And then make sure your product is like right on point. That's right. why everybody loves it so much. This is like, this. that was the best program that I've taken for CCRN. Um, for sure. I passed my test on the first try. So if anybody's get, wants to get their CCRN or CEN, I would recommend those courses. And so does everybody else who takes it. So, yeah. Thank you. So when I um, wanted to, to circle back uh, a little bit to sort of uh, as a serial entrepreneur, um, <laughs> you know, you've been through ups and downs in the economy. And so mm -hmm. 
we're on like the longest bull market run of the U.S. economy. Is there anything mm -hmm. you're sort of doing um, to sort of hedge your bets or prepare for a possible downturn? I mean, nobody knows when it's going to come, but it's going to come at some point, um, probably sooner than later. Um, right. Yeah, what kind of advice do you have there? Uh, well, with nurses, I mean, they're always working. Mm -hmm. When the economy goes down, it, it really doesn't affect nurses because people, matter of fact, when the economy goes down, more people get sick. So um, there's always that pool of nurses. And since that's my market, it, it, you really don't see much fluctuation, mm -hmm. you know? So I don't have that that problem. You know, if I was selling uh, furniture or cars and yeah. especially cars, I, I'd probably see that dip, but not not with nurses, I don't, you know? Awesome. Yeah. And that's, yeah, one of the benefits of being a nurse is that, you know, you're always going to be in demand during the good times and the down times. Um, right. So, right. yeah. So, it's good it's to know like, that your business model doesn't, doesn't suffer much when there's a downturn. That's great. No, yeah. no, no. it all depends on what you're selling. Uh -huh. you know, if I was selling clothes, I think I, I would see a problem, mm -hmm. but yeah. I haven't gotten to that business yet. Uh -huh. <laughs> yet. <Yeah. laughs> Any I, other projects that you have going on or that you've done that you want to, uh, to share with us? No, that's it. I think that's enough. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You've, you've, uh, if I accomplish half of what you accomplish, I'll be, uh, I'll be happy. <laughs> well, before I retire, Mm -hmm. I don't know what age that'll be. I do want to own a restaurant. Okay. And that's the last thing I want to do. Uh-huh. What kind of restaurant? Any real thoughts on that? Well, I do. I want to get a place in Manhattan, mm -hmm. and I want to call it Heaven and Hell. Uh, Heaven will have uh, men dressed up uh, with, like, little white diapers and angel wings running around serving. It'll mm -hmm. be white couches and, you know, very heavenly kind of thing and all good food, all healthy food, lettuce, kale, you know, and then <laughs> hell mm -hmm. will be people dressed up as like devils and there'll be greasy food. Uh, what I'll even going to have done is um, there's an artist in Florida that makes latex uh, lifelike people. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've seen it. It was at the Orlando airport and I have his name, in my office. So I'm going to contact him and have him make life like, like JFK sit with Marilyn Monroe at one table, you know, all people that have died, it just scattered throughout hell. Uh -huh. And so that you and your partner could sit down with Marilyn Monroe and JFK and have cheese for eyes and bacon, you know? <laughs> so, uh, and then, um, like if you want to eat in heaven, you'll have all songs that have uh, the song, the word heaven in it, like knock, knock, knock on heaven's door, you know? Mm -hmm. So, okay. So that's my plan. Cool. That's a, that's a cool concept. I'm sure it's going to get a ton of attention because nobody's doing Thank anything you. like that. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, I wish you all the best of luck in that. Do you have any, any uh, last words of parting advice or wisdom or kind of approaching the end of the 45 minutes? And I know you're, incredibly busy um and i'm sure you maintain your schedule pretty tight in order to get all this stuff accomplished that you're doing so we'd love to hear any I'm sort of also a mother i'm also a mother i have two yeah. i have twins do you really okay awesome. 15 year old well they're gonna be 16 year old twins oh, i wow. have them at 53 okay good for you <laughs> oh, i has a sense of humor all right anyway so my words of advice is just do it life is short just go for it it's not the end. You're not going to die. Mm -hmm. You're not going to die. As long as you're not going to die, you do it. Try it. You fall on your face. You get up. You try a different way. You just keep moving. Awesome. I love it. Yeah. yeah. You're not going to get anywhere if you don't take any action and, and try. And mm -hmm. there's definitely going to be, you know, bumps in the road for sure. And yeah, change your paradigm, you know, change mm -hmm. the mindset, you know, not everything's mm -hmm. a problem or, you know, no. a dire emergency. This is all fun and games. It's learning opportunities. Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I expect to see CRNA cruises. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> oh, you'll do so good. Awesome. Well, yeah. thank you so much for your time. Um, I know I'm just going to check and see what we have for questions. I think we actually covered a lot of these. Um, you have a lot of fans. Do I? <laughs> you do. It's amazing. Good. Uh, I think we actually asked answered most of these questions as we were moving through. Okay. Um, 
but yeah, I just want to thank you for your time. Um, yeah. You're a real inspiration to to nurses out there. You're obviously mm -hmm. a nurse, uh, nurse leader, and so appreciate everything you're doing. Right. You're definitely, uh, blazing trails, and I love it. Can I give my email address in case anyone has questions? Would that be yeah. okay? Absolutely. It's a fed up RN. A fed up RN at AOL.com. Okay, awesome. That's easy. Right there. And then if you guys are interested in the um, CEN or CCRN review courses, um, these are the books I think that came along with the course. Um, mm -hmm. They can go to, is it greatnurses.com? Greatnurses.com, right. Greatnurses.com, top programs for those certifications. I guarantee that you will pass if you actually listen to them and study. So, Thank you. Awesome. Thanks again. Um, I'm going to end the live broadcast and then we'll just chat for a second after that. Bye, everybody. Good luck. Thank <music> you.